This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to the Getsy Health Podcast. We're talking about weed today. Wait, no, we're, we're talking about legal CBD, <laughs> not weed. <laughs> I wonder how many people switched <laughs> off the podcast. It's going to be we're our like, lowest rated episode ever. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> people are really listening now. Maybe. Okay, so we're talking about CBD or cannabidiol, mm-hmm. which comes from the cannabis plant. That's true. And that's why we're talking about weed. But where do we, <laughs> well, we, we are, we are yeah. we're literally, we're talking about cannabis. Now, um, what do we want to start with this? Let's, let's talk about what it is, or should we talk about why we know about it? Should we talk about our story? Yeah, let's talk let's, about our let's story. Let's do that. So how did we discover it? So, um, I remember when I was doing all my research that, um, someone on Facebook, I can't remember who they were part of some MLM company and they said, Hey, you should try this really expensive oil. And I was like, um, before I spend hundreds of dollars on like two ounces of oil or one ounce of oil, I need to make sure I know exactly what this is. So I started researching it. And I went down one of my rabbit holes and I turned to you and we kind of had a conversation of like, Tristan, we need to buy a whole bunch of weed. (laughs) CBD. We need to to buy a lot of CBD because this stuff is amazing. And that's where it went. And we hadn't even really tried it yet. No, we hadn't. No. Like <laughs> this was, so, so not our, not our best moment in terms of, uh, fully vetting these things, but we were just so excited about the, the research, the data out there. Like and the research was solid. It was amazing. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of really compelling research. Now it's not complete. There is not definitive proof of all this stuff because it's actually really difficult to study cannabis or CBD or anything like that getting easier, but it's been traditionally very difficult. However, the information that we could find out there was so exciting to us that we just wanted to jump in. So we started using it ourselves and seeing really great results. We started sharing it with the people around us and they started getting really good results and it just kind of blew up because the the proof was in the pudding, so to speak. Well, and so many people are getting, so at that point we we mass bought it. We bought it in such bulk mm-hmm. because we wanted to sell it at our, um, at, well, at my mom's store at the time. Mm-hmm. And the results that people were reporting back were just, I don't want to say unbelievable, but it was quite, it, it very fast became the best selling product in the store. So some of it really was unbelievable though. Actually, some of our own experiences, um, we, when we discovered this and it was like June of 2017, right? Mm. So I'd been going through cancer treatments for about eight months, seven months at the time. And, uh, so we were kind of, I was using it all summer long. Mm-hmm. And then in August I went for another scan and that's when we found out that the cancer had spread to my lungs. It was stage four and right. they weren't giving me a whole lot of time left. Right. And that was an extremely stressful time in our lives, obviously. Mm-hmm. And at that time that, you know, the story better than I do, but you, you develop panic attacks. Yeah, that's true. And I, I don't know, do you want to talk about those at all? Or would you rather not? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, enough, I just had, enough. I just had panic attacks. That's all. Um, no, I, I can talk about it a little bit. Uh, it, just the usual can't breathe. Felt like I was dying. Um, <laughs> no, no big deal. Just yeah. <laughs> couldn't breathe and felt like she was dying. Right. I but mean, if you've had a panic attack, if you're listening to this and you've had panic attacks in the past, they're terrible. They're not fun. They're not fun because you aren't able to step outside of it and say, oh, this will be fine. Right. This is going to end soon. I just have to tough it out. You're literally calling 911. <laughs> yeah, I mean, own. you're wanting to, right? right? The people around you are the only thing stopping you from actually doing that. Right. Well, it's, it's Terrible, ex- yeah. terrible experience to go through. And and this started happening for Jeanique at, at about that time right. for good reason. But as soon as she started taking CBD, it helped a ton. It would like stop these things dead in their tracks. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. It, it, and it helped with sleeping too. Like, oh my gosh, it helps so much with my sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was like taking Unisom at the time, you know, especially for the bad days. And mm-hmm. it, I, yeah. Like I could tell a massive difference. Oh, another thing, like my mom never sleeps and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping eight hours a night. This is a woman that sleeps like two to three hours a night. 
Right. She would take like a couple drops of the stuff. It was, it was like three drops. It was bizarre how well it worked for her. And those are just our stories, but we would get all kinds of stories from other people as well. And you know, you, you could chalk it up to, this is just a form of mass placebo. hysteria. Yeah. Some sort <laughs> of massive placebo effect. But the fact is that we started seeing those things immediately and it's been three years almost. Mm-hmm. And it's still, and we're our still number seeing one. it. And I mean, Salt product. if you haven't heard of CBD or cannabidiol, then you must be living in a very isolated area because right. the stuff is huge. It seems like everybody has at least tried it. Right. I don't remember what the numbers were. It was something like 81 million Americans have used it Jeez, in the last that's year. That's a lot of people. And so there's, there's obviously something here mm-hmm. and it's, in my opinion, it's more than hype. Right. So, well, when, when big pharma is trying to dip their finger in the CBD pot, you know, there's something there. And yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. That's mm-hmm. a really good point. They have uh, patented their own synthetic version of it Yeah, and they are going to be selling it as a prescription. Mm-hmm. Um, and supposedly they, they try to sell like full spectrum CBD. Like they try to pass laws that full spectrum CBD, the kind that you can buy at our store and other stores, they try to make that, that you could only get that through pharmacies and through um, prescriptions. And w- so that that's, that's how much big pharma right. wanted to like steal that because they notice the potential. Right. And we'll get to the politics of this as we get into the yes, the episode well, here. But if you um, live in Utah, you definitely want to stay tuned for the politics around no, uh, CBD laws in Utah because it's yeah. it is yucky. It's it's pretty crazy. But we're not going to focus too much on Utah. We're just going to use it to illustrate kind of how messed up this whole thing can be. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about what it is now that we've done all the hyping to get people excited know, about right? it if you hadn't already heard of it. So CBD does come from the cannabis plant, just like marijuana Mm -hmm. or weed or whatever it is that you grew up calling it. Right. Maui, wowie. Yeah. Um, Do people call it that? that They used to. I don't know. They probably don't anymore. It's so lame. Do you know what they call it in South Africa? What? Here, get this. Dacha. That's too hard to say. (laughs) So you just got to roll your R's. Dacha. There's an R in there. Yeah. Sounds like a. Actually, it's a G. It's a J. D- it's a J. D- sorry. A. H- a. <laughs> a. Is that how you spell it? Or, yeah, something like that. Anyway, so it comes from the cannabis plant, um, just like marijuana. But most CBD in America, uh, the the legal stuff, especially in states like Utah that that don't really have legal marijuana, it comes from hemp, and. To really help you explain the difference between hemp and cannabis, there is no difference other than a legal one. So in order for a a plant to be legally called hemp in America, it has to have less than 0.3% THC. Mm -hmm. THC is the component of marijuana that makes you high and gives you the kind of the psychedelic effects, if that's the right word for it. And uh, CBD is sort of the the other major molecule in there that Mm -hmm. doesn't do that, but it does have an effect on your body. And there's different types of CBDs too. There's, well, there's CBDA, CBD, all Mm -hmm. of those. Tristan will get into that later. Well, a little tiny bit we will, but, uh, but to give you an idea, so the THC is the, the psychogenic component of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's less than 0.3%, it's called hemp. And if it's hemp, it's a lot more legal in America. Mm -hmm. They use it to make, string and rope and paper and clothing mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. You can get all sorts of uh, skin products, self-care yeah. products right from it. Um, but uh, but a lot of times this hemp can be very rich in CBD. And for years and years and years, they thought it was useless. Mm-hmm. They totally ignored it and they tried to study THC when they could get legal permits to do so. Mm-hmm. But then not too long ago, someone actually decided to look closer at this molecule and they started learning some really interesting stuff about it. Like what? That it was biologically active in human beings. Whoa. Whoa. And and in fact, they started finding out that some of the really positive benefits of marijuana that had been purported by the the users of marijuana, right? These these stoners basically would say, oh, it helps me sleep. It helps my cataracts. It helps with my anxiety, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. A lot of those benefits they were describing were actually coming from potentially the CBD. Yeah. 
except for the fact that over time, marijuana was being bred to be stronger and stronger on the THC side and the CBD was getting bred out of it. Mm -hmm. So once they discovered that there were benefits to this component, suddenly you have people who are like, wait a second, we could turn this into a product. Right. And they started creating CBD oil where they extracted it out of the plant and... They bred back in the CBD. They, they bred the THC out. Yeah, I mean, they, they found some industrial hemp in Europe that was being used to create rope and things. Mm -hmm. And they realized it was already higher in CBD and they started really focusing on that. And voila, Mm -hmm. we kind of had the birth of the CBD industry and it sort of just exploded overnight and suddenly it's everywhere. Yeah. But, uh, maybe should we go into some of the, the science of the CBD? We totally should. We totally should. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, then let's yeah. do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just right. sitting here listening to you. I'm like, this is, <laughs> I haven't heard this whole spiel in a while. So I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. So, mm. so go teacher. <laughs> All right. So CBD, um, it, for a long time, what we thought was it was interacting with our, our, endocannabinoid system in the body. Which is really cool, you guys, because like for the longest time, we didn't even know that our nervous system had an endocannabinoid system. Like the very first time I even heard of that term was in 2017. Like, wasn't that a pretty new discovery, like in science over the past decade? Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't know when they really discovered it. We can look that up. So while you're talking, I'm going to look it up. It is very new. And by the way, the Student just became the teacher. Suddenly, Jean-Ic knows everything about no, the. I I, know, I literally system. know nothing about this. So go. And, and apparently, we're calling it the endocannabinoid system now. What were you calling it? Endocannabinoid. It's cannabinoid. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. She's South African. She pronounces everything weird. <laughs> so, so we have this endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid system in our bodies. And it's to, to put it in really simple terms, it is like a cellular thermostat in our body and we can use it. If we are able to figure out how to tap into this ECS, I'll call it, we can help to keep our cells nice and balanced energetically speaking. So if they get overly activated, that can lead to things like anxiety and overactive sort of brain chemistry and inflammation, all that kind of stuff. If they get underexcited or depressed, I guess that can lead to lethargy and fatigue and depression Mm -hmm. and all that sort of a thing. And, you know, in a, in a really simplistic manner, um, being able to tap into the endocannabinoid system helps us to keep that nice and balanced so that it's neither overly active nor underactive. Mm -hmm. And that is a very beautiful thing because through that, we can bring down inflammation. We can bring down... We can control the thermostat Yeah, really well. Right. We control the thermostat Mm -hmm. and keep the body nice and regulated, so to speak. Exactly. Now, there are these receptors throughout the body that are tapped into the endocannabinoid system or the ECS, and some of them are found in the body below the neck. These are the, the CB2 receptors. Mm -hmm. And there are a whole bunch in the brain as well. Generally speaking, these are the CB1 receptors and THC is very, very active on the CB1 receptors, which is why it has so many psychogenic properties, Mm -hmm. interacts with all those brain receptors and causes fun things to happen in the brain. But does uh, CBD work on the, the one receptors? Uh, not a ton. So it's really interesting as you get into the research that actually some of the research shows that CBD is not particularly related to either CB1 or CB2 receptors. Mm -hmm. Now for a long, long time, we thought, oh, CB2 receptors are all in the body. CBD is interacting with those. That's what's causing all these effects to go on. And there is some research to support that. But other research has found that it doesn't interact with those, doesn't interact with the CB1 receptors in the brain. It interacts with a different brain receptor though, that is called 5-HT1A. Mm-hmm. I hope you're all paying attention. There's going to be a quiz after this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's not. But 5-HT1A is a fascinating receptor because it is related to all of the mental health stuff. Like all of it, it seems like. Yeah. So 
for instance, they have found that activating these 5-HT1A receptors helps decrease aggression, Mm -hmm. increases sociability, Mm -hmm. decreases impulsivity. All of this sounds pretty good so far, right? Yeah, right. It helps to inhibit drug-seeking behavior. So basically, this is a drug for, or this is a an, a substance for little children. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just well, kidding. We can talk Don't about whether it's appropriate for children <laughs> later. No, we start this episode talking minus, about weed. Yeah, minus the the drug stuff. But I'm like, oh yeah, like well, all well, of those things. That, that, that sounds like a little child. A little child could utilize this. Actually, I give it to my son Tennyson all the time. Yeah. But we'll talk about that. We, later. we give it to our children. Um, but, but that's a totally different topic. Most people are just like overgrown children. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so this is beneficial for all of them. For all adults throwing tantrums. Yeah. So it can, it can actually help with sex drive and arousal. Here's, here's a downside though. Mm-hmm. It can kind of inhibit penile erection. Oh. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Penile erection. I'm going to say it twice. <laughs> um, so you really want it, but oh, uh, God, that's awkward. <laughs> I guess that can really help just prolong the magic. I right? <laughs> can we stop talking about this? Does this make you uncomfortable? A little bit. Do you need some more CBD to yeah, kinda, yeah, actually. get you excited for the topic? <laughs> Um, it can help to actually diminish food intake, which is really interesting because as far as I recall, THC increases your desire to eat food. Well, so that totally it's makes kind sense of a balancer. because mm-hmm. a lot of times we eat cause we're nervous or we, yeah. you know, so when you calm the nervous system down, mm-hmm. your, your, um, impulse to right. eat more is diminished yeah. more. So that makes perfect sense. It, the other way it makes sense to me is that you know, who knows what the wild cannabis plant was like before people discovered it. It's been so many generations that it's probably impossible for us to even guess what the original cannabis was. We have bred it into, it's like dog breeds Mm -hmm. now, right? (laughs) Right. Um, Especially on the THC side, there's all sorts of fun named cannabis strains out there, like purple haze and cool. I don't know. Black widow. Black Widow. I don't know. There's there's a white, Widow's White, white widow. widow. There's there a White Widow. Wait, Black Widow's a, a superhero, <laughs> right? We're just going to throw out superhero <laughs> names and you have to guess which ones are actually cannabis right? strains. <laughs> um, don't listen to me, guys. I don't know oh, anything about this topic <laughs> or drugs. Let's be, let's be so, really clear about that. Any, anyway, sorry. We, we're not staying on topic here very well. So, so this original cannabis plant out in the wild, I'm guessing it was a fairly balanced plant when it came to THC and CBD. And having that balance there probably was really beneficial in preventing the plant from totally debilitating people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know if you listening to this are familiar with the effects of really strong cannabis, but it can be a little bit debilitating, right? You get the couch lock and you're just done for the next few (laughs) hours. And, uh, having more CBD tends to sort of mellow out that effect so that Mm -hmm. you can still function. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I would imagine that naturally that was sort of how it went. So in a lot of ways, the CBD is sort of the counterbalance to the THC. But what we found is that if you remove most of the THC, so you don't get any of those psychogenic effects and you just have tons and tons of the CBD, you still get all kinds of these really awesome benefits that I've just been talking about. Right. There's one more here that I want to mention that I didn't actually know about until researching 5-HT1A recently. Mm-hmm. And that's that activating that, that transmitter, the 5-HT1A receptor. With the CBD? With, with anything, but yeah, CBD will do that. Mm-hmm. It helps to reverse opioid-induced respiratory suppression. Wow. Let me explain what that means. So when people take opioids it suppresses respiration. So your breathing gets kind of shallower and shallower. And that's how a lot of opioid overdoses kill people Mm -hmm. is that they basically just stop breathing because they've got so much of that suppression going on. Cannabis via CBD apparently can help reverse that. That's really cool. So I don't know what you do with that information. Right. Probably don't take cannabis if you think you overdosed on opioids. That doesn't sound like a good solution, right. but I still think it's fascinating. Yeah, that is cool. So 
So that's CBD and how it kind of interacts with the brain. So you guys, Tristan was talking earlier about, you know, high THC, low CBD, mm-hmm. high CBD, low THC. Mm-hmm. One thing he hasn't touched on, which I'm hoping you will, is isolates because isolate mm. is just CBD or one part of the CBD. Right. And, and that is, that's more, um, what would you call that? Isolated. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's more med- like it's, yeah, it's, it's medical. Made a, is yeah. What it's, it is. it's made in a lab mm-hmm. and it's not nearly as effective because you don't right. have that whole entourage effect. And yeah. so I think, is this a good time to well, talk about the entourage effect or am I getting, well, off let's, your let's bullet? dive into that. Real quick, though, I want to make sure we round off the rest of the benefits of the CBD because so far I've mostly mentioned the the mental stuff, but it has a bunch of physical benefits as well. Primarily, it helps to bring down inflammation. Yeah. Now, guys, we we formulated our own kind of pain reducing cream and CBD is the primary ingredient. We threw a bunch of other analgesic ingredients in there as well, Mm -hmm. but you use it topically and the stuff is awesome. Amazing. Like when people have really specific areas of pain, you put it on there and it's like, wah, tingle and you're free. It's really amazing. Yeah. Like good stuff. It's probably like our third best seller. So we have the CBDs that are the best seller. My mom's like anti-wrinkle cream and Mm -hmm. then the analgesic cream, which is our next best seller. Like it's incredible. And it's not just our cream. They're are so many topical CBDs out there that do this because the CBD itself is just so great at sort of reducing that pain signal Mm -hmm. and also having just the natural anti-inflammatory effect. So it's, it's fantastic. We have people who will do the topical and they'll take it orally to kind of hit up both sides of it. And it's, it does wonders. We've had how many people in the last just couple of weeks have come to us and said, this stuff has been magic for my headaches. Yeah. Like headaches and migraines. Yeah. We even had someone who, um, who messaged us and this, this guy will get like one or two migraines a year that put him in the hospital Mm. and he can feel them coming. And he said, if I drank this entire bottle of CBD, would it, would I be overdosing? And we, and we said, no, like just keep taking like until it helps with the pain. And he said, like he did almost the entire bottle and he said he didn't have to end up in the hospital. He said, Mm -hmm. in fact, his pain on a pain scale of one to 10, 10 being hospitalized, Mm -hmm. he he was at like a two, three the entire day. Another thing that that brings up that has been really impressive to us about CBD is that it does not seem to have an upper limit. Right. Like we've seen people take astronomical amounts yeah. of this stuff mm-hmm. and the the worst side effects they get are that they're like super chill. Right. Or they, they take a good nap. Right. But it's never like you can't drive. You can't. Mm-mm. It's it's just like, oh, I should go to bed. Yeah. Take it. It's There's no drowsiness, nothing. It doesn't sedate you in the way that a lot of sleeping medications do. Right. It just, once again, it's helping to regulate that cellular thermostat. Mm-hmm. So we're taking all of that high energy buzzing out of the picture. So you just feel calm. So this is what I've heard a lot. I'm a better mom because of CBD. Like, so it doesn't sedate you. It calms your nervous system Mm -hmm. the heck down. That's what it does. Like, because we're always so, I mean, as, as a society, we're just so high strung and CBD just takes it down a notch and it's like, Hey, remember this happy, sweet spot Mm. of mental clarity? Like this is where you need to be. So when your child is screaming in the background, everything's fine. Now we, we will have people tell us I took it and then I was just so tired And what I always tell them is, well, what's your sleep history like? Right. And what we usually find out is that because they've been so wired for so long, they haven't slept very well in a long time. Of course they're tired. When you finally take all of the cortisol out of the picture and you're not running on pure anxiety, your body suddenly can tell you what it wants Mm -hmm. and what it probably wants is to sleep. Well, and not only that, people are not sleeping and then they're drinking caffeine that keeps them more mm, wired. Yep. So then they take CBD and their body's like, oh yeah, this is the state I'm actually naturally in. Yep. Let's go take a nap. And then they're like, oh, I'm really, really tired. It's like, well, yeah. you should probably just sleep. We need to do an adrenals episode oh, soon. Let's talk yeah. about that a little more. Huh? Seriously. So, so the three things that people buy CBD from us for the most, and I imagine this is pretty representative of most people in the country. It's pain, sleep, 
and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Those are the top three. They're not the only three, but they are far and away the most common things people use it for. And people come back for it over and over and over again. So Mm -hmm. it must be doing something for them. So, so let's talk about the different types of CBDs. Now you've seen all these benefits, but you probably know somebody who has taken CBD and was like, yeah, I didn't do anything for me. What a mm-hmm. waste of money. That stuff was expensive and I got nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that definitely happens. And there are several reasons why. One of them, one possible reason could be that it is just not a good quality product. Right. So let's talk about the different ways that you can get CBD. Mm-hmm. The most common these days is actually pretty good. It's a CO2 extraction where they're basically using carbon dioxide, they kind of shoot it in there to separate all the molecules out and then they capture the good stuff and voila, you have your, your CBD. It's not our favorite method of extraction, but it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty good one. It's clean because CO2 is not going to contaminate your product. Right. Right. Um, but it's not, yeah, it's not our favorite one. However, a lot of the time when you go out and you buy a CBD product, that's what you're going to see. Right. However, you're going to be very, very tempted by the product on the shelf that's like 20 bucks cheaper than everything else. And you're going to say, how is this possible that this product that has all of the CBD in it, there's a thousand milligrams in here, is so much cheaper than all these other ones that only have 500 milligrams? Probably because that's an isolate. So this mm-hmm. is what Johnny was talking about earlier where they basically are creating a synthetic form of CBD Mm -hmm. in a lab and throwing it all into a little pile. And it's like 99.9% pure CBD. And they market that as a good thing. Right. And they sell it to you for super cheap because it didn't cost them much at all to make it. Right. And then you take it and it doesn't do anything. So you take more and it doesn't do anything. So you end up taking tons and tons and tons of it. And then maybe you notice a little tiny bit of something, Mm -hmm. but what's going on here. The fact is that you are no longer benefiting from nature, right? The entourage effect, the entourage effect. So what they do with these CBD isolates is basically what they do with medication, Mm -hmm. right? They find a component that seems to be active in causing a positive effect. And then they isolate that component And then they concentrate that component, they shove it into a pill, and then they prescribe that pill to you. Right. They send you on your way and say it's going to fix your problems. And a lot of times it does fix the problem it's meant to fix, but it causes 10 others. Right. We have the same thing that goes on with this. Right. So maybe it ought to be a medication in that sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it ought to be in the garbage. That's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so watch out for the isolates. Uh, not only do they not work at regular doses, you end up having to take so much that you don't really save money anyway. But you also start to run into another issue when you're taking really high doses of it. And that is that it can sort of interact with other medications Mm -hmm. because CBD is metabolized by liver enzymes specifically. Oh dear. I'm going to forget CYP450. Cytochrome P450 enzymes Mm -hmm. um, produced primarily by the liver and they help to metabolize all sorts of different things. But CBD is one of them. And what will happen is you will get a bottleneck effect where you have so many things that need to be processed by the CYP 450 that it has to wait its turn, right? Mm -hmm. We get traffic jams and while everything is waiting for its turn to be metabolized, it's still active in your body. It's swimming around in there doing doing its its thing. thing. (laughs) And while you might not think that's a bad thing, it certainly is a bad thing if one of those products waiting to be metabolized is a medication right. that you need to watch very closely. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. If uh, that what suddenly- kinds of medications like uh, like anti anxiety medications and yeah. you know like psycho like what what's the word psycho. Um, Psychoactive. Yes, drugs? psychoactive Is that drugs. What you're yes, for? thank you. Yeah, I mean you Stuff can like that. you can actually Google Flockhart table, mm-hmm. and it'll show you a list of all the medications that are metabolized by cytochrome P450. Right, and it's not just medications. There's also herbs. Um, one of our favorite herbs, artemisinin, mm-hmm. is in that category. That's, uh, has a bunch of different names. Wormwood would be another one. Right. It's great for killing, uh, parasites. parasites. Yep. Awesome for killing parasites, but you have to be careful because you could also be taking something like fluoxetine mm-hmm. and 
you don't want to overdose on that. But if all of a sudden your body can't metabolize it, it's as if you just took a whole bunch more than you normally do. What's fluoxetine? Uh, fluoxetine is a mental health oh, okay. Uh, Prozac. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, so anyway, most of the time, it, this is not an issue, mm-hmm. right? You're not taking so much CBD that is going to mess up all your other medications. However, we do tell people, start with a low dose. Yeah. So that you can be sure you don't have a weird reaction to it. Right. One in a thousand people, it seems, do react strangely to it. Mm-hmm. And you can make sure that you don't have any of those issues where suddenly your other medications and things are a lot stronger. Right. But uh, we rarely see that happen. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody go through that experience with our product. No. But it's far more likely to happen with the isolates because you have to take these super high doses. Right. And then all of a sudden you're putting way more stress on your liver metabolism and then wow. Right. Exactly. So, um, so that's, that's the isolates. I don't like them if that's not obvious. They're just not, they're just not effective guys. It's a waste of your money. Yeah. That, that, that's what it comes down to. Why yeah. go away from the natural thing? It's like buying a synthetic vitamin when you could just get it from real food. And you know how we feel about synthetic vitamins. Exactly. Right? So don't get synthetic CBD. It's right. just me. Okay. So now within within the actual CBD where it's coming from the plant, um, you can sometimes find it produced from alcohol and alcohol extraction. Mm-hmm. Don't Don't do that. Um, there's yeah. always residual toxins in there, methane, hexane, that sort of stuff. It, yeah. You don't need that. The CO2 is really quite good. However, if you can find it, try to do a steam distilled product. Which is what we sell. Which is what <laughs> which is what we sell. And the reason why we do it is because they extract the CBD using virtually nothing but a little bit of heat. Yeah. And it's really brief heat. Mm-hmm. So they're not destroying the, the natural enzymes of the plant, so right. to speak. They're not messing with all of the wonderful cannabinoids that are in there. Mm-hmm. They're just getting them out. They're activating it at the same time. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And, and then you have your product and it's so clean. You know, what's interesting is um, a year and a half ago, um, I, I had a client come into the clinic who was from Oregon who worked for a CBD company and when I showed him our products and he's like, well, what, what kind of method of extraction is it? And I said, steam distilled. And he said, you're kidding. Someone figured that out. Yeah. And um, so the company that we use, it's actually a patented method of extraction. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's, it's incredible. Like yeah. we love steam. Di- this is how I like to explain it is, um, you know, when you steam broccoli, And it gets really like, it gets to this, you start steaming it and it gets this really vibrant green. It's, Mm -hmm. it's like a bright, bright, beautiful green. That's when it's done. Mm -hmm. You want to pull it out. You want to eat it at that high vibrancy. You know, when you steam broccoli for way too long and it starts to turn like a brownish green, like that's what happens with alcohol extractions and CO2 extractions is Mm. it's like, it's overcooked hemp. Mm. And it still works. Like you're still going to get nutrients the same way you're going to get some nutrients from the overcooked or oversteamed mm-hmm. broccoli, but it's just not, you're not going to get quite as much as when it was at its peak, Right. you know? So, so that's why, and this is going to sound so uneducated, but don't buy overcooked CBD. <laughs> so um, <laughs> right. here's another thing too, about the industry of CBD. And then we can get back on to Tristan likes his, little pattern, like his, he's got his bullet points of like, My okay, agenda. we're talking about this and this and this. And I'm like, let's just like roll with it and see how we feel. But um, one thing about the CBD industry and how it's like so hot is there's a lot of companies out there that are charging a lot of money for CBD, but there was a health, um, expo, like an exercise health expo. And I know this because one of my friends works at a gym and, um, and he said that there was a, a third party tester who took 13, uh, he took every single CBD company's, uh, oil from mm. this health expo and tested it. And it was something ridiculous, ridiculous. Like eight of the 13 had no CBD in it. Yeah. Like Isn't that none. Insane? And I'm just like, are you kidding me? People are charging hundreds of dollars for a bottle and what people are buying is plain oil. Yeah. And yep. 
So anyway, so it's really important that you find it. We'll talk about the politics of CBD and how it's not a very well regulated industry right now that is changing, but that's one thing we need to be mindful of because it's so hot. It's so popular. Right. And, and that reminds me that we need to talk real quick about the entourage effect. Mm -hmm. So We've talked we about, we mentioned that like 10 minutes ago, but did, do we use the word entourage? I, I used entourage. Right. Effect, so, yeah. so there's, you've got the THC, you've got the CBD and that's just a small portion of the full picture. Those yeah. by far and away, they make up the majority of what you'll find in your CBD oil, yeah. primarily the CBD, a little bit of THC, but there's all these other molecules too. CB. A, CBN, CBG, CBC. I mean, yeah, there's a ton. Name a letter of the alphabet. There's probably a CB before it, right? Right. And they all interact together in complex and countless ways to produce the effects that you get from it. Ways that our science isn't smart enough to figure out yet. It'll, we just it, know that it, yeah. it works. It's just, it's so complex. I mean, you, you could say the same thing about virtually any plant out there, mm-hmm. right? Every plant is full of all these different polyphenols and flavonoids and um, whatever the stuff in essential Essential oils oils. is, volatile organic chemicals of Mm -hmm. all different types, right? There's also terpenes that you find Mm -hmm. in the uh, hemp plants and they have their own properties. And it's like this whole ecosystem of of life on a microscopic scale. It's like a symphony of multiple instruments. We cannot enumerate it. There is no way for us to quantify what is taking place there. Mm -hmm. But we do know that it's necessary, which is once again, why the isolates don't work, but it's also why it doesn't work as well. If you cook the thing to death, right? You've got to preserve as much of that as you possibly can. Exactly. And that's what we try to accomplish by using the the heat method, the steam distilled Mm -hmm. method. And that's why we are in love with it. And we will never go away with it. We have had so many people approach us. (laughs) They always, they come out and like, listen, you've got to do our product. It's the best we can get it to at mm-hmm. such a great price. And our answer is always an emphatic, not interested. Well, actually we always try it out. Oh sure. We try it. And we like, try it. and then we give it away, you know, cause we're like, eh, right. like we didn't like it. There's, there's been one company that I was mildly impressed by, mm-hmm. but like, again, nothing near what our standard is. Yeah. The, the fact is that we just, have not found anything yet that can compare to this steam distillation method when it comes to preserving the essence of the plant. Exactly. And on top of that, of course, the the sourcing of your plants is super important. Now, this is something to know about hemp and cannabis. They suck up whatever is in the soil. Heavy metals. Mm -hmm. Heavy metals, radiation. All right. Uh When, when Chernobyl happened in the eighties. I'm so glad you're telling the story because I was about to tell it. Oh, you want to tell it? No, no, no. So, so I I was in Ukraine. I lived there for two years. (laughs) So (laughs) So I'm kind of an expert. (laughs) (laughs) So, so you've probably heard of Chernobyl, right? The, the nuclear plant power plant that Mm -hmm. basically exploded in, mm-hmm. in Ukraine in the eighties. And it created this gigantic radiation cloud, yeah. but the area surrounding the plant was uninhabitable mm-hmm. for years and years and years. But one of the things they did to kind of restore the ecosystem faster and get it to inhabitable faster they was planted hemp. they planted hemp mm-hmm. all around it. Cause it absorbs that, everything. that hemp just sucked up all the radiation and cleaned the soil mm-hmm. so that they could start using it. I don't know if they've actually started using it again. And I certainly won't trust it no. for a long, 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 yeah. long, long, long time, but really cool. Mm-hmm. However, when you think that that's what hemp is capable of, and then yeah. you think of the fact that you don't know where your hemp came from. Nope. You don't know what kind of soil it was put in. You don't know what sort of chemicals were in that soil or what chemicals were used on the plant. Yeah. Cool thing about hemp is that it's so sturdy that it doesn't need a lot of anything. Yeah. It, it, it's a weed. I mean, that's why they call it weed. <laughs> you can grow it anywhere. Right. But um, the fact is that if, if the land it is planted in is not clean, it, then the plant itself will not be clean either. Right. So you need your plant not only to be grown with organic methods, but it needs to be grown in a clean place. Yeah. And that is so, so important. Yeah. So there's a lot to consider when it comes to your product. Mm-hmm. 
No. Where are the, do you know where the major uh, CBD growers are in the United States? Colorado. I mean. Do, do they grow it out in California? Uh, probably. I'm sure they do, but I wouldn't consider it a major growing hub. Okay. Just because of what we know about the soil in California. Right. I'm like, I would never, yeah. like, that's why we buy ours in, in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Like, so we would, we wouldn't touch Right. Uh, Californian weed with like a 10 foot pole. No, prob probably not without we, seeing some COAs. We so. used to sell CBD from the Netherlands actually. Yeah. They had really good COAs, but the ones yeah. that we have now are oh, like okay. we, we had a third party tested actually. We mm -hmm. sent it to a lab in Florida and it mm -hmm. actually came back better yeah. than what we were expecting. It like, was impressive. We were so happy mm -hmm. <laughs> because you never know, right? Like you right. never know what crop you're yeah. getting. So we're, we're partial to Colorado. It's not very far from us. We used to live there and, and it's just a good place as good energy. We're getting mm -hmm. some good juju, no, ju juju. into our, mm -hmm. our hemp, but, uh, but Washington, Oregon also have some wonderful, mm -hmm. um, hemp crops. Interesting. Okay. So just uh -huh. interestingly enough that you mentioned Oregon, there is someone who's going to come on our podcast soon who owns a mushroom company, mm -hmm. like, and she wouldn't buy her mushrooms from Oregon because they weren't clean enough for her. Ooh. I know. Isn't that so? Oh. She actually gets it from a very specific town right. in Asia. So Oregon, you are on notice. Yeah. Like, like we're keeping our eye on get you. Your, get your mushroom game together, right. Oregon. <laughs> That town in Asia is working you. It's in China somewhere, actually. I, is, I don't know. Uh, it's a remote village in China. Where so she gets hers we're, from. We'll talk to her. It's it's an adventure yeah. from the sounds of it. So I'm, I'm excited yeah, to I'm do excited that. Yeah, I'm excited to do but that. Anyway, back back on topic. So, so hopefully now you kind of know everything to look for. However, you can and should be able to ask for certificates of analysis when it comes to your product mm -hmm. because people should be testing their stuff yeah. like that, that convention where half the products didn't even contain more than any half. CBD, more than half, eight out of 13. I bet that the people selling it didn't know that. Yeah, no, no idea. They bought it from someone already ready to go. They slapped a label mm -hmm. on it and started Hawking it. Well, and with how trendy CBD CBD is now, you're seeing all of these affiliate, you mm. know, all these MLM influencers and, and, you know, it's yeah. just, you know, we'll give you free product if you promote it, you right. know? And it's like, did they do the research? Have right. they really looked into it? Have they looked at the yeah. COAs? Are there COAs? So, so a COA is a certificate of analysis and it's basically a third party lab that tests the product to determine first how potent it is, how much CBD, how much THC, how much of all these mm -hmm. other things is in there, but it also tests for contamination. Mm -hmm. So you can find out if it does have those bad alcohols, the hexanes, the methanes, the heavy metals, all of that sort of stuff. Right. And you need that. It, they test for mold, right? Mm -hmm. You can do everything right in the growing. And then while you're transporting and manufacturing it, it could develop mold. Right. And then you're giving that to people and they're ingesting it. Mm -hmm. That's I, not I good folks. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of things. So the testing is so, so, so important. And most people don't know to ask for it. Right. But if you have any questions at all about the trustworthiness of your source, mm -hmm. you should be able to ask for it. I'll be honest. I've had maybe two people ask us, for certificates of analysis in the three years that we've been selling it. Yeah. That's not good guys. <laughs> you should be challenging more. Don't trust me this much. Um, but you know, I'm happy to give it. So right. I know our stuff. You're going to get a whole bunch of emails now asking for that. It's okay. Cause we can share it. Yeah. So RIP all right. my inbox though. All right. So, um, so that's, that's how you find good CBD. Let's talk a little bit about the politics and why it can be so dang hard to buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, somewhere around, what are we at? Over half the states now have legal marijuana. Is that right? We should look that Either up. Either medical or recreational. Um, Johnny's going to look that up, but, but. Are we looking up like THC and CBD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know about marijuana. Okay. I don't, I don't really necessarily care about the yeah. hemp because if it's, if it's legal to get marijuana in your state, then it's most definitely legal also, to get CBD. The endocannabinoid system was yeah. discovered in 92. 1992. So longer ago than I would have expected, but not right. that long ago, mm -hmm. really. I and mean, when it comes to science, 
you know, like that's when it was like first discovered yeah. in a lab somewhere and right. they weren't really applying that to right. health and wellness. They were just like, oh, there's something new on these neurons. That's yeah. weird. Well, and then probably yeah. like a decade later, we're like, wait a second, right. this plus this equals amazingness. Well, and to put that into context, prior to 1937, 1938, Cannabis was like everywhere. People were using it all the time. It grew all, all over the place. And then some political stuff came up and cannabis was turned into marijuana and mm-hmm. scared all the people. And they talked about reefer madness and they made it illegal and, and you couldn't even research it. And so we have this black hole in research on cannabis for decades And that's why they didn't discover this endocannabinoid system until 1992, in spite of the fact that human beings have been using cannabis for centuries, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But that's kind of a different soapbox. So did you find it? So marijuana is legal in 11 states for adults over the age of 21 Mm -hmm. and legal for medical use in 33 states. Okay, so over half the states have some form of medical marijuana or Mm -hmm. recreational marijuana. Yeah. And if you are in one of those states, there's a really good chance that you don't really have an issue getting CBD locally. But here's where it gets difficult. If you want to buy CBD online, it can be a lot harder to come by Mm -hmm. because it's still federally illegal in a lot of ways to do this. So it's considered a high risk market, which means that banks want nothing to do with it. Yeah. It was really hard to find a credit card processor Mm -hmm. for uh, Mm -hmm. for selling our CBD. Well, and we're still, still working on that to be totally honest. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't have our CBD openly available online. You have to um, know the secret code to get to it basically. Mm -hmm. But um but the, the fact is that it's because so many of these credit card processors and banks are skittish about it. They're right. worried that any day the federal government could decide, hey, we're going to go and raid and take all of your assets. And then because they were involved in it, they're also guilty of conspiracy to distribute right. drugs or whatever it is. So they don't want to touch it. That's changing gradually. Mm-hmm. So you're starting to see more and more of it available, but it can be a little bit tricky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what else do we want to talk about as far as politics goes? Um, should we talk about the mess in Utah? Uh, please, please. Let's talk about that because that was okay. So what happened in Utah is the perfect example of how greedy people Mm -hmm. prey off of something that is working and they, they want to dip their fingers in it basically. And then they say, no, it's to protect the public. Yeah. And it's like, no, this is to fill your pockets with money and your friends' pockets with money. So go ahead. If, if you know anything about us, you know that it is so easy to get us riled up just by mentioning political corruption. Or just mention Big Pharma. <laughs> or just and mention... I'm, and I'm already raging. <laughs> yeah. So so power corrupts. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all there is to it. Right. And anytime you have a lot of power concentrated in one place, it's almost inevitable that corruption is going to come out of that. Yeah. In Utah, the way that this played out is that um, CBD started getting popular Mm -hmm. and a certain member of the Utah Senate decided he didn't like that. Did you, are you going to mention names? I will. Okay. I will. (laughs) But uh, this fellow sponsored a bill to basically turn CBD into this medication Mm -hmm. in Utah, made it really difficult to get, started talking about dispensaries or actually pharmacies Mm -hmm. was the word that he used. And very specific, not all pharmacies, only very specific ones. This is important Mm -hmm. guys, Mm -hmm. because you'll see how this all wraps up so horribly. And so, so the way it plays out now is that essentially you have to register yourself as either a grower, a producer or a seller Mm -hmm. of CBD. And you're not supposed to be more than one of those, Mm -hmm. or you can get in trouble. If you are a grower of CBD, they literally look over your shoulder throughout the growing process. And if your CBD comes back even a tiny bit too high in THC, they watch you burn your crops, Mm -hmm. crops that you have worked your butt off to grow for months or years. And you put it up in flames. But here's what's really frustrating about that. They aren't doing it right. They're not looking at THC content as in, nine, oh gosh, I can't, what is it? Nine Delta Tetrahydrocannabinol. Mm-hmm. 
I'm okay. saying that wrong. Don't judge me. It's a hard word. I don't know what you're saying, but active THC. Oh, okay. They're supposed to measure active THC. And if it comes back higher than 0.3%, then it's considered cannabis and it's mm-hmm. an illegal cop. They're measuring all forms of THC, including unactivated THC. That's great. Which is going against federal regulations. They're basically going against federal law. Is this only in Utah? A lot of states do this. Utah is one of them. Mm. And, and they're forcing people to burn what are quite likely legal crops. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So it's not even worth it. Here's no, I no go to Colorado for goodness sake, get yeah, some seriously. land in Colorado and grow it there. Seriously. Get away from Utah as much as I would love, love, love to have a Utah grown local source of hemp that mm-hmm. we could send to our processor for the steam distillation. It's not going to happen anytime soon with the way that the government's doing it here. Okay. So here's the infuriating part. That wasn't it. Okay. Are you going to back up to Evan Vickers? Yes. Senator Vickers of, of Utah. So rewind to when they're trying to pass this bill that CBD, it has to be a drug just Uh like prescribed and then can only be taken out at certain pharmacies. The dude who wrote the bill is a pharmacist. Yep. <laughs> he owns pharmacies in Utah. Yeah, he does. That compete with CBD. Yep. Oh, it gets worse. Uh-huh, His family pharmacies were the single largest provider of opioids mm-hmm. in one county in Utah that I can't remember the name of. Okay. Isn't, okay. Like, Come on. Come yeah. on. Yep. All right. This dude is a part of, of the opioid epidemic in America. Yep. And he is actively working as a politician mm-hmm. to stop us from fixing that. You guys, he's not doing this out of like the kindness of his heart. This is all money to him. It's he pure doesn't politics. Care. He doesn't care that there are hundreds of thousands of Utahns that are getting incredible benefits from CBD. He was going to make that harder for everyone so that he could have more money in his pockets. He doesn't care that people are having opioid issues because he is filthy rich. Like this is politics in medicine, in our healthcare. Like these are the people running this ship. And but, it's, but it's, and it's, it's wrong. It's cool guys, because he said that his pharmacies weren't going to be CBD pharmacies. Just his friends. Just all of his friends' pharmacies. Mm-hmm. Come on. Just come on. Friends, Senator Vickers, you're on notice. Yeah, I know. And not in the way Oregon is. Oregon, you're cool. You're off the hook. <laughs> Vickers, you're not. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not happy with you. A lot of people aren't like, happy with you. It's so slimy. It's it so slimy that you're going to have to take a shower after this episode because yeah. that's how gross he is. So, so anyway, it gets worse because the, the federal government can't make up its mind about how it feels about CBD. One day they're talking about maybe legalizing cannabis altogether. The next day they're saying, whoa, 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 CBD is not legal. Whoa, you guys shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. So we're always walking this line where we're waiting for the next shoe to drop, so to speak, where they're going to say, okay, this is illegal now. Right. All of your products, all the businesses you built up around this, they're suddenly worthless. Right. You've got to go underground. Right. It's no wonder people would rather just buy pot from the kid behind the dumpster no than kidding. try to navigate this system. And we're not even talking about cannabis, right. right? Like we said, there are no psychoactive effects of CBD. You don't get high. No. You don't have any hallucinations or trips of any kind whatsoever. No. You just experience less pain. You feel a little chill. Your you body's more better. balanced. <laughs> like it's amazing. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid you do that without the permission of your medical overlords. Right. Oh my gosh. Ah. It's it's a little infuriating if you can't tell. And so yeah. So there you go, guys. There's the politics of C B D for you. I know that was fun. So, so we're in a golden age right now, to be perfectly honest, where CBD is available in pretty much every place and the prices keep getting better and better, Mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So hopefully, hopefully we continue on this trajectory and in the not too distant future, this is just uh, something available in every household, Mm -hmm. right? It's part of your kitchen pharmacy that you use with your family. It's natural. It's safe. It's effective. What more could you ask for? Right. 
But that's the exact kind of thing that our government loves to shut down because mm-hmm. that makes it not super profitable. Right. So that's CBD in a nutshell. There you go. Is there anything so, we didn't cover with it? Yeah. Dosage. Who oh, right. Take it? So, people, okay. so Let's because get I get, people ask me this all the time. I probably get like daily messages. How should mm-hmm. I take my CBD? Yeah. Is it safe for my children? Can I take it while I'm breastfeeding right. or pregnant or anything like that? Okay. So, so who the, is CBD for? The, the official line on this is that we don't know if it's safe for children because it's never been tested with children. Mm-hmm. Right. There's, Although, so there's no research. There, I mean, okay, let's, let's say what the research is. They did some pretty extensive research looking at CBD for febrile seizures, mm-hmm. right? Children's seizure disorders even. Right. And it was awesome. It was amazing. That's kind of how it blew up. Actually, it was a little girl named Charlotte who was having all kinds of seizures. They gave her this hemp oil CBD and Bam. Without you know, THC or with THC? I'm pretty sure it was low, low, low THC. Okay. Because it was a kid, right? They didn't want right, right. to get her high or anything. True. And and that started the company Charlotte's Web, right. which is one of the first and the biggest um, CBD mm-hmm. companies out there. Yeah. But that sort of started the explosion. So we know that it certainly is helpful for children with seizures, but yeah. there hasn't been safety testing long-term, blah, 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 blah. So take it with a grain of salt. That being said, we know hundreds Mm-hmm. Of kids Hundreds. who take it on a regular basis, and kids, teenagers. We have yet to have anyone come back to us and say all the ways that it ruined their mm-hmm. child, or any, any single way that it caused problems for their child. One of my favorite stories is of a grandparent who came into our shop, and he's like, "I want that that oil," and we're like, "Which one?" And he's like, "My grand," like he wasn't making sense of me, and he's like, "My grandson is completely." different. I want the oil that, that helped him. Mm. And we're like, Oh, you must be talking about the CBD, Mm. you know, because it just, this was a kid with like ADHD and he was just sitting calmly at a family function. And his grandfather literally goes up to him and it's like, what's wrong with you? And he's like, nothing. And he, and the grandfather's like, but you're different. And he's like, well, yeah, I feel different. And then he's like, so what are you taking? And he mentioned the CBD. So, Mm. you know, we get a lot of fun stories like that. Mm -hmm. One of my other favorite stories is little babies with eczema you read that CBD on their eczema and it can help because again, like what CBD does is it brings the body back into homeostasis again. Right. It calms down the fires, yeah. you know? And so you have inflammation in your skin, you rub some CBD on, it can potentially bring that inflammation down. On that note, here's what CBD doesn't do. CBD will not remove underlying issues that cause yeah. inflammation and eczema and things like that. Or so, sleep disorders or. Right. Yeah. So, so it's not meant to be looked at as a cure. Right. For one, that would be illegal for us right. to even say, yeah. but for two, it doesn't cure things. It helps to Soften manage things. symptoms mm-hmm. while you address the underlying problems. Exactly. And that is how we always recommend people to use it. If you have a mm-hmm. sleep issue, don't just buy CBD and think that that's going to solve your issues. Yeah. You will start to develop a tolerance over time and mm-hmm. you'll need more and more of it. And eventually it might not work anymore for you right. unless you are actively working on what's causing your sleep issue in the first place. Right. A lot of times nutrition is involved, not just with sleep, but with all these things, mm-hmm. right? There's a nutrition factor. A there's stress a, factor. There's a, always, always a stress factor. Mm-hmm. And we'll cover more of that in our adrenal episode. There's a uh, lifestyle and environment factors. Totally. So, mm-hmm. so there's, there's all this stuff you have to take in consideration, but CBD is a huge part of managing that Yeah. because it's hard to fix underlying issues if you're miserable and distracted all the time with your symptoms. Right. Um, so it's safe for children, allegedly. Alleg- yeah, <laughs> that's, exactly. That's, that's so, as I can so say. So here's, this, you know, when people are like, can I give my child that? I'm like, you're totally fine giving your child ibuprofen. You're totally fine giving your child like all of these other medications. Like the fact that you're worried about CBD, like that's the least of your problems. You know how we feel about vaccinations, but if you vaccinated your kid, go go look up the insert for the vaccine that you just gave your kid. Look at all of the potential side effects that go with that Mm -hmm. vaccine and then compare this, that yeah. to the potential side effects of CBD. May take good nap. That's the side effect. <laughs> you could probably Google and find all dozen negative cases that involve CBD. Yeah. And 11 of them will involve contamination with some other chemical. Right. And although there honestly, is a legitimate, like, 
I think we've had two people who have had like some kind of allergic reaction to it. Right, which is why we tell people start with a really, really low. low dose yeah. so that you can catch that before it's an issue. But mm-hmm. but the fact is that it it's not even in the same universe no. as medications are. Right. People won't hesitate to do the medications, but they will sweat. Mm-hmm. They will sweat it out mm-hmm. when thinking about whether they should do CBD. Yeah. Fine. That's up to you. Totally up to you. It's your family. It's your children. You have to take responsibility. Yeah. Um, but pregnant- I will tell you, like oh. I've, I've taken a breastfeeding. I've given mm-hmm. it to my children. Satori, so I think the first time she took it, she was like one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she, like I'll give it to her when she's not sleeping well or something mm-hmm. with our son, Tennyson. I think I've mentioned in the past, like he has some sensory mm-hmm. stuff. Like when he has a meltdown, it's not just a meltdown. It's a three hour meltdown. If we don't interrupt. If we it, don't. Yeah. yeah. And so when, when we can like after an hour, then we're like, okay, come here. We're giving you CBD. And then he's like calm in like five minutes. When we're smart, we don't wait a full hour, but right. no, sometimes but we're stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, because we think he's just going to calm down, right. but he just gets more and more and more revved, you know, no matter mm-hmm. how we're trying, like he gets to the point where you just can't get through. Right. And I'm not kidding. Like sometimes it goes on for like two to three hours. Right. And then and that, and that's the point where we're like, why didn't we give him CBD like an hour ago? Yep. And then we do. And then he's like, boom, he's normal again in five minutes. And it's he'll be like, crazy, yeah. it's so fast. And he's mm-hmm. like, I feel better now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, good. <laughs> I'm yeah. really glad. Right. So, okay. So it's been an hour. We should probably wrap up here. Yes. Um, hopefully, hopefully we covered everything except for how to dose. So I always tell people start low, increase slow, mm-hmm. just just to be safe. All right. So start with a couple of milligrams. Mm -hmm. It depends on, you know, what product you have. They're all different in their potency and strength, but a couple of milligrams, a couple times a day, just make sure nothing weird happens. Pay attention to how you feel. If you actually notice a positive effect from it, great. You can stay there. What's a milligram? It depends on your product, your but exactly. But so, just to give an example, um, our lowest potency product is 600 milligrams in a one ounce bottle or 30 mm-hmm. milliliters. Which means that if there's uh, 30 drops in the whole bottle, that means that each drop has. You mean in the whole like? Uh, sorry, if there's the 30 drops dropper. in a milliliter, so a dropper. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Then that means that basically there's math. Can you, do, can you do the math? I, I can, it's basically, a, it's a milligram a drop. Okay. Is what it a works out A dropper full, you mean? Nope. A milligram a per drop, drop oh, which gotcha. would be 30 milligrams in a full dropper. Okay. Right? So yes. literally you're looking at just a couple of drops. So what I normally tell people is when you start taking it, you know, your first day take very little. Just make sure you don't have like mm-hmm. an allergic reaction. And then mm-hmm. I tell people, then you do a half a dropper full mm-hmm. once to twice a day, mm-hmm. depending on what you're dealing with. And then the next day you do a full dropper full. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you do a dropper and a half full. And then the next day, like until you find that kind of sweet right. spot. Yeah. And and you can increase as quickly or as gradually as you mm-hmm. like. Some people want to get really precise so they're not wasting any of it. Yeah. Some people just want the benefits. So they mm-hmm. kind of just crank it up and then you can start decreasing gradually. Exactly. Um, it's totally up to you. But once again, you don't have to really worry about overdosing on it. Yeah. So there's no concern there. The The only concern you should have is, am I going through this faster than I need right. to and spending more money than I need to? Also, you guys, there's no such thing as a perfect dose. No. Like everyone's dose is different. Yes. It's never going to be the same. So I'll just give you some examples. Um, my mom literally only needs three to five drops. Mm-hmm. I need like a dropper full to mm-hmm. help me sleep. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm having a panic attack, I need two dropper fulls. And this is of our lowest concentration right. bottle because right. I because I don't like the taste of the other two. Uh, <laughs> it's our- really strong. So this is our CBD, you guys. We don't add any glycerin or natural flavors or any. It's literally just the oil. And MCT. And MCT as a oil. carrier, uh-huh. which doesn't have a flavor. So yeah. And so, so it tastes like it uh, tastes weed, like weed. weed in a bottle. In an, in an oil. Yeah. And so and but you know what my kids take it just fine like they oh, yeah. actually ask for they, it they love it mm-hmm. and so they're totally fine with it right. but I always warn people and I say it doesn't taste pretty so right. like if you need to put it in a capsule then do that yeah. but again like no one's dosage is like it's going to be the same. No, and even from day to day, your needs are going to change. And Mm -hmm. this used to drive me crazy because I would try to find protocols. Like I want to know how many milligrams I need for these different conditions. And I realized way too late Mm -hmm. because I should have figured this out earlier is that 
it's impossible to say because of how it interacts in our bodies. Exactly. Right. You have to account for the stress level you had that day, how well you mm-hmm. slept the night before, Your what weight. sorts of foods you have eaten recently, mm-hmm. what types of medications and supplements you've been taking. There are a million factors a out million. there, which is why you have to go by how you feel. Mm-hmm. And by the way, which is why no medication is ever, ever, ever going to be as good as the stuff you can just buy from a store right. because they're going to give you a dose and they're going to say, you need exactly this amount, this many mm-hmm. times a day. And they're not accounting for all these other factors. Right. They don't have all of the cofactors that come with it. Right. It's a garbage product. Mm-hmm. It's garbage. Don't waste your time on it. So another thing, just, just to give you guys some like reference ranges and stuff. Um, it's, So typically when people are having sleep issues, they need less of a dosage than those who have pain issues. So people that are taking CBD for pain, they're often taking like sometimes five dropper falls. Mm -hmm. If you're having sleep issues, you're taking like one to two. Yeah. A lot of times people land around the 20 milligram mark when it's coming to like anxiety, sleep Mm -hmm. stuff. With pain, you can easily hit a hundred milligrams. Right. Um, which for some people makes it not that great of an option. It's yeah. just really cost prohibitive, but, uh, that's, you know, that's how it works. That's why we created the cream, which can definitely bring that down a bit. Totally. So, but, uh, that's basically how you use mm-hmm. it. So you have to pay attention to how you feel and adjust your dose accordingly. Yes. I mean, ideally you would carry it around in your pocket and dose as needed, but mm-hmm. people don't do that. So just feel it out. Yeah. Currently and, I just take it when I am restless and mm-hmm. I don't sleep and then like panic attacks mm-hmm. like yesterday when I couldn't breathe. If you do take medications that you're concerned might interact with it in that way that I talked about with the mm-hmm. enzymes, take the medications first, give yourself about 20 minutes, then take the CBD yeah. because that way, if something does get stuck in the bottleneck, it's going to be the CBD. Yeah. And like we said, you can't overdose on that. So it's perfect. Exactly. It's okay for it to swim a, in your body a little bit longer. So, Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's it guys. So less dosage for sleep and anxiety, more for pain. Um, everyone's dose is different. It's going to be even different from day to day. So you'll kind of like feel it out, I guess, experiment. Uh, if you do have questions about this, uh, you can reach out to us. Um, let help at mygutsyhealth.com. Send us an email. We can tell you do whatever you want to know. Do we want to give the link to... No, I you can don't. Miss it. Okay. I don't want to, but if you want the link, then email us help at mygutsyhealth.com. I'll or send message you a link. me on Instagram. Or find gutsy underscore mom oh, mm-hmm. at Instagram. And then and, I'll send you the link. And we'll send you the link. Um, I just, I don't want our credit card processor to cut us off. Okay. So <laughs> Yeah. That, would be, that, that wouldn't be really fun. No, it would cause some headaches for me. So I would need a lot of CBD. Okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, if you want us to do an episode on the other half of weed, the THC side, let us know, know that too. If we get enough interest, I'd be happy to talk about it. I don't want to scare people off though. So <laughs> if you don't want to talk about that, then let me know that too. And if I get enough people, then... I'll give you a trigger warning before we do that episode. (laughs) So anyways, anyways. I hope you learned something new today. CBD is fascinating. I think it should be in everyone's medicine cabinet Mm -hmm. really just for those, those days. Oh, one last story. Who was it that was telling us every time their daughter got like an injection in their arm and their arm would swell up. Oh yeah. And then they rubbed the CBD on it and like Every like time they rub the, the CBD on, like on it, it doesn't swell. Yeah. So, it, so you guys, it's great for topical, and I don't know why I just threw that in at the end there. But there you go. There's another story. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye.